Clay Helton out at USC, and we we kind of have seen this coming for a long, long time. I do find it a bit comical that it, it last year was just proof that no matter how good you are, once you get yourself on the hot seat, you are always on the hot seat. They went undefeated in the regular season last year, got beat in the Pac-12 title game. Now, obviously, it was a shortened season. We get all that. But it seemed like things had kind of turned around a little bit with Graham Harrell. But you have one pitiful performance where you are just completely outclassed, and that's exactly what happened on Saturday night against Stanford where they were beaten 42-28. to And Stanford put up, I think it was like eight yards per play. I mean, just destroyed USC. And, and now he's out. They announced it on Monday that he will no longer be the head coach. And now we have a coaching search on our hands. AD Mike Bone has quite a bit to figure out. He, of course, came over from Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Clay, 46 and 24 in seven seasons. That is not a bad coaching record, but it's not good enough at USC where they expect bigger, better things. I, the Clay Helton situation, Chris, I believe, was it, it was extended due to all of the different crap that has gone on in that athletic department over the past, what, three, four years with the FBI investigations, all that, you kind of feel the same way. Yeah, uh, Pat Forty probably said it the best. He talked about it on on their podcast, and then I've heard him talk about it on a couple other outlets, where he said the only reason Helton got, what, seven years or however long it was, was, was simply because Lynn Swan started this thing off with the worst contract that USC has gotten themselves in with a coaching situation in a long time. So they didn't want to eat that. He got the FBI stuff. Then he probably would have been fired going into last season. But, you know, they wanted to give him one more chance. We ended up having a weird-ass COVID year. And that, you know, kind of kind of gave him the opportunity to not make mistakes because they didn't have to play Notre Dame like they always do. They didn't have to play, you know, a lot of the other non-con games that, that, that you know, sometimes they struggle in. And, and yeah, it just seemed to buy him a lot of time. Yeah, and, and of course, they did not look good in a lot of their games, even though they went undefeated uh, in the five regular season games that they did play. And then it was just icing on the cake that they got demolished by Oregon in that Pac-12 title game. And then, of course, get demolished at home Saturday night by Stanford, who, of course, the week before got demolished by Kansas State. It's just not a good look. It's not what you want your football program to look like going forward. And now that there's a little bit of stability inside the athletic department, now we are looking at a full-on coaching search that they have not had there in quite a while because Clay Helton, of course, was an interim coach. Before that, it was Steve Sarkeesian. Before that, it was Lane Kiffin. They were always going back to the well. You know, it, Pete Carroll to a bunch of Pete Carroll guys to Clay Helton, who came over from Memphis as the quarterback's coach back in 2010. He has now been at Troy for, you know, 11 years now, a pretty long time, and and he hasn't been bad. He just hasn't been exactly what they want. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the candidates. Some of these I'm going to rapid fire, but I put together a list of all of the different ones that have been named by all these different places, right? And I just want to get a really rapid fire. Now, some of these we can dive into, but a really rapid fire idea of them or your thoughts on them as we go through, okay? Uh, the first one that okay. we'll do... We will do uh, James Franklin. I think it's a uh, absolute perfect fit. That is the home run hire if they can get it, right? Well, uh, we disagree on that, but that's fine. I think <laughs> they want him. I think they would see that, and I think they would agree with that. I think Franklin is a good coach. I think there are a lot of other coaches better than Franklin. Yes, absolutely, but I think that Franklin fits the the L.A. profile. Right, and that's that's no, why I, think I don't give a shit about any of that stuff. I think that's stupid. You know that though. I've, I've made that clear. I don't care about fit. I don't care about style. I don't care about any of that. I want the best coach. Damn it! I want the best coach. All right. So in that in that case, Luke Fickle. Thoughts on that? So I think Luke Fickle is the easy answer because the AD came from Cincinnati, and and they obviously have a relationship. I don't know that he was the AD that hired Luke. Is he the AD that actually hired Luke? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, but but I know they had a relationship. I know Luke worked under him for a while. So that that I mean, once again, I like Luke Fickle a lot. I think Luke Fickle is a great where he's at. I don't. I, I that wouldn't be my first call. Yeah, I I tend to agree. 
I tend to agree. I think Luke Fickle is great a great coach. Great yeah, coach. Think great. he would be successful, but he, not the best option that you could get. I think he's more of a Midwest guy. He has no ties to the West. And, of course, we have said in the past, if you're an all-star coach, you are going to be an all-star coach no matter where you go. But in some instances, I do think culture matters. Personality matters. And I just I don't know how he fits out there. So, either way, Matt Campbell, Iowa State coach. Yeah, I mean, say, repeat everything I said about Luke Fickle. That's my Great thoughts coach. exactly. I love, I love the guy. I love the guy. I think he would do well there. I think in seven years you're looking for another coach. That, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think Matt Campbell eventually yeah. will scratch the NFL itch, but who knows? Who knows, right? Mario Cristobal over at Oregon, he, of course, big recruiting ties over in the West Coast because of all of the Oregon stuff that he has been doing. He has come into USC's backyard and taken a bunch of kids that USC wanted, and I just don't know that he would actually leave Oregon. I don't think that that is yeah. even a I real possibility. USC is not a better USC is not a better job in Oregon. Yeah, okay, okay. I can I can be sold on that. I can be sold. So, tell me this. Do you think that they would go the coordinator route? Because Tony Elliott, the offense coordinator at Clemson, is is from Southern Cal. Like, he's not from Southern, not the school, but that's that's home for him. If he were going to no, take a big-time job. They went, they went they went a small route last time. I know, I know taking a, you know, a, a small coach like, you know, from Troy ain't, you know, ain't what USC people want. I, I get it that Tony Elliott's a bigger name than Matt, even being a coordinator. But you can't. This can't be your first first guy who coaching gig at a major level. You, this is too big for that. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, hey, listen, this, this is Southern California. This is Hollywood, damn it. And UCLA is kicking your ass right now in the perception of who is running the Pac-12. I know that UCLA hadn't beat them, but all we care about is what we've seen today. And today, USC looks like a bad program, and today UCLA looks like they got their shit together. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they got to make a splash. They got to make a hire. They got to do something that's going to bring some funk and some noise, and I think they got to go get somebody real. I don't know who that is exactly. I got a couple of people in mind that I like, but, but it ain't my call. I don't see them going a small time route. I just don't. I'll be shocked if they do. I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. I've got a, a whole list of names. Again, we're going to rapid fire this, okay? PJ Fleck, don't like it. How about yeah, you? I don't like either. Okay. No, not for this job, no. Do you think any of these three would come out of retirement to take the job? Stoops, Peterson, or would Urban come back from the NFL? I think all three would strongly consider it. Really? Yeah, and I think all three would be much better than anybody you named so far. Well, of course. Of course. I think any of them could absolutely win there. I don't think Peterson wants to come back, and I, I think he especially does not want that USC job because he has talked openly about the pressure of the Washington job over what the pressure was at Boise, and and I think USC would just be – I think that'd be too much. But Urban and, and Stoops, possibly. I, I could certainly see it. Okay, I've got two NFL guys that we'll kind of rapid fire on. Eric Bieniemy. Okay. Eric Bieniemy. No chance. You don't think so? Zero two. Why is that? Uh, I would not bring Eric Bieniemy in knowing that he's never recruited a player in his life. Uh, okay. You're getting beat on the recruiting trail by Oregon. You're getting beat on the recruiting trail by UCLA. You're getting beat on the recruiting trail by SEC schools and Big Ten schools in Notre Dame coming in your backyard and taking kids. You cannot bring somebody in who doesn't know how to recruit people and who doesn't get people fired up. If you're going to take an NFL coach, you better damn well go get somebody who gets people fired up. Okay, then that leads me to the next name. What about Joe Brady? I don't I, – man, I worry about Joe being too good to – like getting jobs too fast. I agree. I think he's too young. I think, listen, this happened to Lane Kiffin, okay? Lane Kiffin was the heir apparent – to, to to the genius of football. And he eventually became what I think everybody thought he was going to be. But he failed at a lot of jobs and embarrassed the shit out of himself on the way up. I worry, does, does Joe Brady have, he's, a, he's an assistant, he's a, he's a, a part-time see at LSU. 
not even the, the full time guy. And then he's got one year under his belt as the full time OC in the NFL. That's his resume. It's two years long. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't think you're wrong there. I don't think you're wrong. That scares me because you're not asking, does he know how to coach? Does he know how to run a practice? Does he know how to handle all of the small things that you got to do? Now you're going into college stuff to the NFL. So now, does he know how to build a staff? Does it what you got to do in the NFL too? Does he know how to um, recruit? Does he know how to fundraise? Does he know how to do all the media stuff? All the extra bullshit that you have to do to be a college football coach. That scares me. I love Joe Brady, and I want him to be successful, and I am afraid of him getting – I'm afraid of him looking like Lane Kiffin too soon. I, I tend to agree. You brought up Lane Kiffin. What are the chances of him going back out to, to USC? I think there's zero chance that he goes back to USC. I think it's too much baggage, right? Well, I don't even know if there's baggage. I just – I'm, t- I'm talking about – fired the, me the way the, – the If you fired me the way – I have I have an old security job. I've, I've only been let go of one job, okay? I didn't do anything wrong. A new boss came in. I was printing money for the company. It didn't matter. He didn't like me. I didn't like him. I was looking for another job. The second he found out that I was looking for another job, he came in and he fired me. There's nothing. There's nothing that company could do today. I mean, they could, they could drop seven figures in my lap, and I tell them to roll it up real tight and shove it straight up their ass. Okay. I, I, There's I wonder, nothing. I, I, I this think guy it's was the same embarrassed. Thing. He was fired on the tarmac of an airport. They, they, no, no. They, they did no dignity. There's zero chance I think Lane would forget. I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. And so this is one that, that I thought up, and I don't know that it's even possible. I don't know that anybody would even look at it, but you freeze. That's the that's name I thought of as well. Gary, if you're a power program, if you're a big boy program and you want to win, and at some point in time you're willing to say, I care about winning. And it's so easy to let past like discrepancies go and stay in your past, right? Yeah. Like it, somebody else, oh, he did that stuff at Old Miss. He didn't do it here. You know? He, he, didn't, he didn't do it here. He didn't do it to me. So so let's bring him on. And 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 all honesty is discrepancies are super mild. The discrepancies are, are are frivolous. They're not even a big deal. Yeah, no, it, it, it it's easy, like it's it's low hanging fruit for people to make fun of. But at the end of the day, yeah, but, he's an incredible head yeah. coach. the The man is sixty six and thirty five against the spread in his last hundred and one ball games. Like if, he's, he, if he comes out and he wins, nobody's going to give a damn that you're making jokes about him nailing hookers. You got okay? that right. And then when he goes up to L A. I'm going to bet more people have consensual sex with hookers than they do with people in their relationships. <laughs> that's a stereotype. I don't know if that's true. I just said it. But I, you you can convince me that it's real. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we talked a little bit about NFL guys and whatnot. If Bill O'Brien is successful this year at Alabama, yeah. uh, is Bill He's O'Brien. A big name. There, I think, there's, there, Bill, Bill O'Brien's a big name that I thought of. There's an NFL guy you haven't brought up. Mm, well, hold on, hold on. I've still got several names, but I don't know that I've got. Okay, so my next one is, is Greg Schiano. Possibility? Ooh, I love Greg. But you know me. I like Greg. If I was the OC, I'd call Greg. And I'd at least see what it would cost and talk about it. Yeah. But I think he's a great college football coach. I, th- I think he is as well. I think he is as well. Now, he has deep ties in, in New Jersey. I don't know what the fit would be with USC, but I know that I know he could win. I know he could win. He's there. one of those I don't care about the fit. If he would have became the coach of UT, he would have been successful. He didn't have any ties and stuff. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A man knows how to coach college football. You got that right. All right, two other guys that have proven that they can coach, but it is at a smaller level. Jay Norvell at Nevada and Brent Brennan at San Jose State. Either one of those Mountain West guys. Now, there's, zero, there's zero chance they're going to go back to a G5 school. This is not. This is yeah. what happens. If you if you marry a hot blonde and, and it was a terrible relationship, the next girl you're going to marry is going to be a brunette or a redhead. It's just it. You're just not marrying another blonde. You, just, you already did that. And it was it was not a good situation. Yeah, okay? I mean, it, clearly, you know, like if they, you marry somebody who's outgoing and likes to party, the next person you marry is going to be an introvert. If you marry an introvert and it's a terrible relationship, the next person you're going to marry is going to be an out part, outgoing partying kind of person. They're just not going back to that well. Agreed, agreed. And Clay Helton was never a, a G five coach, but uh, you know he he was a, an assistant at Memphis under Tommy West, and then came over to USC 
and worked his way up, right? Like he he became the interim and then won the job. Uh, I guess over over Ed Orgeron. I mean, just it, it, I don't even understand how how all that stuff worked. All right, two big names, and then I'm going to give you the name that I think that they should hire. It, a lot of people talking about Brian Kelly. Possibility? I don't think Brian Kelly would leave Notre Dame. I don't think he would either. I think Notre Dame's a better job than USC. I tend to agree. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree. The other name, Pat Fitzgerald. Name no, no, zero chance. I, I don't think he's going anywhere other than maybe the Bears eventually. I don't know that Pat Fitzgerald knows how to recruit. I think Pat Fitzgerald's a really good coach. I think he has surrounded himself with a staff of people that know how to recruit to a very unique place like Northwestern. I think he can sell Northwestern because he is a Northwestern grad. Okay? I don't know that you could just – you. Pat Fitzgerald's a guy that you can't – he can't be raised up in one business and say, you you sell, you sell insurance. You're the best insurance salesman in the world. Now we're going to sell Nissan. I don't think he can do that. Yeah. No, you're, I don't think you're wrong about that. I don't think you're wrong. The about guy it. I that think, I think they, that I would give a phone call to is Robert Sala. Now we don't have a lot of resume that Robert Sala can, can coach at a head coaching level. He's been a head coach for one game. He's 0 and 1 with the Jets. But Robert Sala is that guy that at least brings fire and excitement. And I think kids would die for that guy, okay? He's a defensive-minded dude. It's a little different, but the last guy that you had that was a super success was a defensive-minded guy that everybody loved to play for. And I I could see making that – and he's a USC guy. I could see him getting I, – I would, I would call him to gauge his interest. That's what I would do. I know he's coached one game in the NFL, and I know that if he takes this job, does he ever get another NFL gig? I think if he's successful for a decade, like Pete was, yes, yes. The stink of you coached one year and then left. Why would we? Why would anybody else give you a chance? Because they want to win. Well, okay, so so this one's a little different because. He has not coached in college since 2005. He was a defensive assistant at Georgia. And, you know, being a me, like, kind of kind of the same situation, right? Like, I, I'm... No, I'm but they're two totally different people. This bien is a great offensive mind. But bien reminds me of an accountant who's just a really good accountant, okay? There's nothing exciting about bien is bien not going to tell any stories and get the hair raising on the back of your neck and get people fired up. True. He's not going to sell a program. He's not going to recruit. You sit the enemy in, in a kid's you know room to recruit him in their house, and they're going to fall asleep. Okay, and Dan's going to ask him to, to do his taxes. Right? Well, and, you can and hold on. And be, in there. The enemy is also exactly what you always say that you don't want as the coach. He is the guy that coaches yeah. the side of the ball that the genius coaches. Right? The That's Andy right. Reid is the, the offense. Yeah. That's right. Robert Sala has put together great defenses on staffs where the other coach has always been nothing but an offensive guy. Yes. So, so you're talking about a guy that doesn't have much college experience, but, but the things that I need from a college coach are I need you to be excited. I need you to be fired up. I Can you recruit? I, I listen to Robert Sala talk, and I know he can recruit. I, I see Kirby Smart recruit his ass off. But I listen to him talk, and I don't know how he does it. Because I don't know anybody who would enjoy listening to him or learning under him. He seems incredibly boring and dumb by the way he speaks. Robert Sala, extremely exciting. I would like to play for a guy like that. I would like to work for a guy like that. I would want my kid to go work for a guy like that. I think if I'm if that guy's going to lead him in football, he's going to be a great leader. I can, uh, I can understand. Him and the enemy are so different, it's not even funny. The uh, the guy that I would call is I would call Billy Napier, and here's why: right, coached under Saban, coached under Dabo, so two of the best coaches in college football at this moment. He has learned under the best, and also coached in the Pac-12. He checks those boxes. He's an incredible recruiter at that G5 level, but he has also been the best recruiter on two big Power Five national championship teams. He understands what it takes to win. If I were them, I would call Billy Napier and just see, right? I think he's an all-star. Like, I think he's going to be incredible. 
but it, it, well, give me your thoughts on Napier before we move into this next thing. I, once again, I don't see them going the G5 route. They're too big of a school. They're too big of a program. They don't want to do that. The second thing about that is you give him credit for being the best recruiter on those teams. When he left, did the recruiting go down? No, no, it didn't. It, it continued. Okay. Then, then, that's a, then, that's a, then that's a really hard pill for me to swallow as a part of your resume. Okay, okay. I can... And I love Billy Napier. You know that. You know that. Yes, yes. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.